this is torture. I'm not giving up, though, even if I hit the wrong damn button. It said we were close. It's probably going to take three second round picks for this to go through. So picks 34, 53, and 61 to Winnipeg for the 12th. And let's see if I can safety net with a fourth. Let's see if I can safety net it with a sixth. Straight up. Okay. Three second round picks to the Jets for the 12th overall. Jesus. And Washington takes Prevalov. Fuck. That's who I wanted. I mean, these two would have been nice, but I would have had to move them off of center. Skvordson? Pelosi, Jacobson, Joseph. Okay. Well, um, it might have to be a defenseman. It might have to be Brock Cripps. Or Krogh. Cripps was one year out. Krogh is NHL ready with a Subban comparison. Why aren't I playing? Why am why aren't I playing Hut? Because I have too much self respect. Uh, let's see. Nolan Fitzhenry one year out. Bannister. See, Bannister's not bad. He's NHL ready, but he's a playmaker. And ideally, whoever we take here for a forward would play with James Hagens on the top line, who's already a playmaker. So that doesn't make too much sense. Everything about Fitzhenry though is the fact that he has a hard shot. Meg, I gotta be honest. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to help. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's my response. Brock Cripps, Krog could take the next great line A, Pavo line A. I don't know how good a skating is though. Apparently, it's trash. Hmm. It's either Fitz Henry or Krog. But again, our defense is already looking pretty solid, at least amongst the top four. Not getting Privil off sucks. I thought it showed Scandalberry as a playmaker, but he's actually a sniper. Maybe I should have just gone for one of these two and paid the extra to Ottawa because Jesus Christ. It's interesting that it's showing Crips at 10 when it's saying he's one year out. Sniper at 16 with terrible skating. Well, the skating wasn't confirmed at all. He does have a good shooting category and good physical. He's got to be a power forward. Line A has to be a power forward. And I'm feeling like Fitz Henry. I mean, has A plus shooting compared to the A minus puck skills. Like, there's no way he's a playmaker. I'm just gonna have to get him to move off of left, uh, off of center to left wing, and that could work out. Nolan Fitzhenry, you're the guy. I had a hunch he was a sniper. There we go. So he is a center, which isn't ideal. I desperately need him to change to left wing. Um, but we got a high six sniper and Nolan Fitzhenry, who will hopefully be able to work really, really well. With James Hagens, and indeed the shot is his best aspect. So welcome in, Mr. Fitzhenry. Uh, there's no way we're trading up again because it's way too expensive, so we'll sim to pick 39, but I will look back at the first round to see how the rest of it went. Uh, so Bannister, oof, Bannister was an 80 overall, medium elite. Here's the thing, though, he's a playmaker. So he is better. He is better, but he just did not fit the team. Rips was a 72 medium elite. Line A is 73 medium top six. Yeah, I think we made the right choice. Krogh didn't go until 16th with Philly. Um, Krogh wasn't bad either, but again, defensively, we're good. We went for, you know, need as opposed to best available. We'll see if I regret it. At the moment, I don't. Great pick for Carolina there. At the moment, I don't, but time will tell. Stutzel. Henry at a high nine. 
Stashney's great. A bit of a minefield of a draft. Kessler is a high starter, a 78 to Winnipeg. Of course, that's one of the picks that we traded away. So Winnipeg did pretty well for themselves. So that has us here. NHL is for Hut, though. Yeah, if you get no bitches. Vesa Vico. Three years out. Kuznetsov comp. Not great. Warren Olsen. Not great. Kai Koivinen. Ooh. Attributes look good for Koivinen. Koivinen could be decent. It's also Ryland Burns could also be decent. NHL ready for Ryland Burns. Koivinen looks good, but we know for a fact how good Burns is, which is nice. Maddox Fitzpatrick. Two years out. Uh, Yerki Taravainen. Tristan Doughty. Graham Pickering. Abanoff's not good enough. Eric too. Etu Eric. He looks amazing, but we already have a low franchise goalie. Sven Omen. Let's call a timeout here. Oh, trading Brock Besser hurt my soul, but he had to go. Koivinen or Burns? Kai Koivinen. Definitely screams power forward. We just don't know the confirmed ETA. Whereas Ryland Burns is definitely going to be a two-way. NHL ready out of the gates. It's tough to look past Ryland Burns. Now, obviously, Burns could be the long-term 2C behind Hagen's. If we're going to look to move Fitzhenry to the wing, then again, you could argue Hanzik is the long-term 2C. Actually, the Grievas are the long-term 2Cs. The Dossadines. Burns on the Flames. That's a, that's a fair shout. That's a fair shout. Hi, Koivinen or Rylan Burns. Would I be able to trade with Detroit just to get both of them? Say, fuck it. Why not both? Value wise, it's a bit rough. We do have the extra goalie in LaSalle that we could give up here. He's not bad, but clearly Bodiger is our guy. Or even Nushwander. They're both high starter. What if we give up the Nushwander? And we give up our third rounder. How close are we? A bit off. We can pull this off, though. All right. We managed to work out a deal with Detroit. We have back-to-back -back picks. Why not both? First up, Rylan Burns. 76 medium top six two-way center. Very nice. And we will take the Finn. Kai Koivinen with this next pick. A 75 overall medium top six power forward. Very nice. So we are locking down the future of the team. Our next pick is not until round number four. Couple of Norwegians. We got Jordan. Don't call me Joffrey Lupel. Uh, in terms of any like steals, it's not looking too good. A couple of three out of four low elites. Do we have anybody with a guaranteed potential down here? Low fours. Okay. Um, well, we don't have too much to go off of here. Not at all. Tyler Kilger and goal might not be that bad. Opal, Petrie. Another goalie, Dawson LaRose, might also not be that bad. Tyson Guggen. Not going to be good enough. Apparently, this is the time to take a goalie. 
Uh, 19 is a really good physical, really good shooting for Cash Anderson. I don't know if I believe that, but. John Pensick. Well, we can, uh, we can take a goalie or we can take one of the low elites, uh, Bo Dexter was next up five years out. He does look like he's going to be one of those long-term low elites if he's even a low elite. And then Robert Ekman's 19, so even if he is a low elite, he's going to be trash. Um, might as well go for a goalie for value's sake. We did just trade a goalie. There's Kyler Kilger. Dawson LaRose. Those were the big two. Up next. Uh, Kilger could at least go to the AHL immediately. Uh, so could LaRose actually playing for Tapera. Let's go for Dawson LaRose. Medium backup, but a 74 overall. Okay. Well, I mean, he will do well in the AHL. What a bizarre player. 74 medium backup. Kilger was a 59, so clearly we made the right choice. Did we miss out on anybody, though, with the high potential? Doesn't look like it. What a really weird player. Anderson was a high top six. Oof. Dexter was a low elite, but only a 51. Again, low elites are not as strong this year as they've been in years past, unless it's a draft of glory. And you can play them in the NHL. Um, Who the hell is next here? We have anybody with any promising grades that we're aware of? There was a couple of guys with some B's, but nothing too crazy. I don't think we're gonna find any type of uh any type of crazy steal at this point. So Lowe's completely in the it's it's not as strong as it was, that's for sure. Uh we yeah, I mean case in point like Robert Ekman. Fuck it, we're going into meme picks. Who's the tallest? Quite a few guys at 6'6". Six, six. Oliver Phillips, Zach Wilson, Gavin Lesuk, and Leith. Leith? Leith? Leith, Leith, Hunter. Who's the shortest? 5'7", Dace Dercatch. The shit people name their kids nowadays. Who's the, who's the lightest? Dace Dercatch. Who's the heaviest? Connor Sturgeon, the big fish. Let's go for the big fish. Connor Sturgeon. Hell yeah, brother. He's terrible. Hell yeah. And now, now we got to go for the short king. Now we got to go for the short king. Fuck steals. We're here for the memes. Show me Dace to catch. The catch of the day. Terrible. And that is our final pick of the draft. But we did our damage early on by trading up, getting the combination of not only Fitzhenry at 12, but then Burns and Koivinen back to back picks. We moved on from Brock Besser, which allowed us to do that. So, all in all, not a uh, not a bad day at the office. Um, even if Mitch Marner refused to be traded. Uh, if he did, we would have traded him to try and get Landon DuPont, but he wasn't willing to go. So goalie-wise, Wolf, we are going to let Walk to free agency as a qualified RFA. See if he gets an offer sheet. Spencer Knight is an interesting one. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't amazing. But we can qualify him for pretty damn cheap, so let's do that. Uh, we're going to cut Jack Campbell. LaRose can immediately go to junior. Or junior to the AHL. And then LaSalle is still in junior. Defensively, Eric Carlson, you were a bust and a half. You're out of here. Hunter Brustowitz is going to get qualified. Kevin Ball. 
He had a rough season, man. He's not a bad third pairing defenseman because of like the physicality that he brings. But he was pretty bad. He wants almost three million dollars a year for the third pair. I'm not willing to do it. So, Kevin, see you later, big fella. See you later. Uh, Nick Blankenberg is gone. Robert Bortuzzo is gone. Jet Wu is gone. Henry Brustovitz. The old Brustovitz will be signed. And we won't worry about Sturgeon, who is terrible. Right wing side, Blake Coleman. Wants two million bucks. Which isn't bad, but... Again, trying to balance him being on the fourth line when he should be a third liner. It's just, it's not going to work. So we're going to let go of Blake. Koivinen will be signed immediately to his ELC. Uh, we brought in Tucker Robbins, Robertson, excuse me, on waivers, but he can go. Uh, Joe Aginla still in junior. Left wing side, Stromgren qualified. Pelletier qualified. Parker Bell, fuck it. Keep you around, why not? And then for centers. Backland. Backland, Backland. 2.2 million for two years of the modified no trade at 38. I gotta be honest, for the moment, I'm gonna let the captain walk. Gotta let the captain walk for now. He might come back, but... He's not a fourth liner, which is what we need him to be. We'll qualify Hanzik. We'll get, little, get rid of Noshek, who we had to pick up at the draft in a, a trade for Besser. Ryland Burns. Sign him to his ELC. Uh, Fitzhenry. Sign him to his ELC. And your catch is not much of a catch. So RFAs. That leaves us this crop of talent here. Uh, Spencer Knight is looking for a dirt cheap contract for the upcoming year. Um, if he'll sign it, then cool. I mean, that's a really good deal for us. And yeah, he's back. Dustin Wolf looking for five mil. I don't, yeah, he's not willing to sign long term with us right now. So we got to let him go to free agency and match whatever offer he might get or let him walk. Uh, Mr. Brustowitz, what do we got for you? A uh, four year deal would be good. He's looking for a decent amount. Four year deal wouldn't be too bad because um, he is a second pair guy for us and that brings his expiry status still to RFA. So 4.5 for four, it's a bit much, but we'll see if he takes it. Stromgren was very good last year. Two-year deal for him would be nice. He's looking like a third liner as well. Let's see if he takes two by two. Uh, Pelletier has reached the end of RFA status, so... He's honestly not looking for that bad of a deal. That two-year deal he's asking for is pretty good. I don't hate it. And he took the deal. Uh, Parker Bell. When does RFA status end? We got you for three more years, buddy. Keep developing. And then Hanzik at center, who's going to look to step up and take Backlund's spot. Hmm. I'm just uh, trying to walk through the fucking grass. <laughs> Four years? Can we up that interest meter enough? No. He'll do it for three, but he won't do it for four. See if he takes 1.3 for three years. That'd be a really good deal for us. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Hanzik's back on the qualifying offer, not the deal that we sent him. Same for Bell. Stromgren's back. Roostowitz wants more money. Really? All right, Hunter, let's talk. Four years. You didn't accept four and a half. Will you accept four and three quarters? 
He is not willing to budge on it being a four-year deal. He wants a three-year deal. Which is okay. Not the end of the world for me. He really, really wants a three-year deal. God damn. Three years for four and a quarter. We'll see if he takes that. You son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. Three years of four and a half. Hunter, you're out of your goddamn mind. What are we doing here? You know what? You want to play games? You can go to free agency. You'll be back. You'll be back. You want to play games? I don't play games. Piss off. Says the man playing a video game. I don't play games. No, sir. This is real life. Let's go see what's up with the coaching staff before we take a look at free agency. Uh, we can get rid of this goalie coach who sucks. And let's see if there's another A-plus coach out there. There is not. What do we have for real coaches that we might be able to train up? JVR, Brent Burns. Those are the only two that are out there right now. Okay. Uh, so AHL associate coach, JVR. Oh, goodness. And then Brent Burns. Hey, look, if I can run this team like Rogan, you know, like Logan Roy, just minus the the racism and the hatred of my children, then damn it, I'll do it. And the sexism, and that was actually a lot. He was a problematic character, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, let's get rid of uh, Derek Ryan and Vadim Shipachov. We're gonna look for a B or higher in terms of scout grades at this point. Yeah, we got plenty of. Plenty of people we can send offers to here. So let's do that. Kind of mad Mitch Marner wouldn't waive his no movement clause. What a jerk. Exercising your right to stay here. I never should have signed you and Besser, damn it. Who knows what Matt Coronado could be. He could be anything. He could be Brock Besser. <laughs> Disappointing me by not being able to score goals as a top line sniper. He could be anything. But, all right, free agency. Who's out there? Then we'll still have to set up our offseason goals. Ovi. Okay, let's look at RFAs first, though. So in goal, Dustin Wolf, Brustowitz is ours. So the only three that we could possibly go for, I believe that's Aku Ratu. Yeah, it's Atu's brother. Uh, there isn't anybody that we're going to want to go for there based off potentials. So for UFA goalies. Top dogs, Jordan Bennington, Sam Montembeau, Mark andre Fleury at age 42. Flower is still kicking. That's insane. And in terms of prospects, medium elite, 20-year-old, 73 overall, Piotr Andreanov, who uh, we almost drafted but didn't. Um, yes. Yes, we will gladly send you a deal. That is another goalie in the system. Uh, there's also a medium starter in Axelson. And in honestly, even Drew Comesso is not that bad. What about Carl Axelson? He signed as well. Um, I don't think we have another spot for a goalie. But we did just bring in some more prospects, which... Is always good for the value. You can never have too many goalie prospects. Yeah, so technically we can't bring in another goalie unless Wolf were to leave. Uh, the AHL is going to be very, very interesting next year. Very, very interesting, especially because Boat Tiger really should be the starter. It's like Andrianov might be the third choice NHL goalie, and LaRose might be scratched. So nothing else we can do goalie-wise, but it's a lovely problem to have right now. Uh, who do we have for defense? Eric Carlson, who, of course, we're not going to worry about at all. We just had him. Honestly, we don't need to worry about any of these guys. Although, wow. Old Trithaway. Trithaway. Um, was not signed by Utah. 13th overall pick, and they didn't sign him. Okay. 
Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. There's also low elite 20 year old enforcer Aaron Kessler. Seventh, what the hell? Seventh round pick of the Red Wings. 80 overall, 20 year old low elite enforcer who's NHL ready, and the Red Wings didn't sign him. Holy sh- Okay, now see, th- this team... Welcome in Aaron Kessler. Holy hell. God, if players like that are possible this year. And in high six, we got Cade Weber and Emil Andre, but they're both a bit too old. Dude, there's a dude named Vader. Teague Vader. Yeah, I mean, we definitely don't need to spend the big money on anybody when there's prospects like that to build up. I still have to check forwards, too. Top forwards this year, Ryan O'Reilly, Alexander Ovechkin, Morgan Frost, Patrick Kane. What do we got for prospects? A couple other dudes that didn't sign with their teams. <sighs> Some of these guys I might send back. We'll see. But Mr. Wozniak, welcome in. Potter? Ellen Potter, welcome in. And Banak, Adam Banak. Well, there we go. We have just added in some prospects that we uh, might send back and we might not. I am intrigued by this guy, though. He's a low six, but he's a 72 at 19, Sergey Froloff. That's an interesting one. And then we got a high nine in there in the Schrossel, who is very intriguing. All right, hold on. Can we go for Nostrassel as well? Back off Nostrassel. And can I also go for the low six, or are you going to show me at full contracts? Roll off. We're going to have to move somebody. Okay. Well, um, we need to move like an AHL or off of our roster to make space for Froloff, but we are going to be looking pretty good here. A lot of it now is just going to be a matter of off-season development. Shout out to one year with the biggest of Billy's. Billy, how are you? Thank you very much for yet another resub. I do appreciate you. Uh, honestly, I'm cool if it doesn't give us that low six because we do already have a low six to test them out. So rosters looking good. Can't sleep, so I'm here. Ah, yes, your your friendly neighborhood melatonin <laughs> at twitch.tv forward slash twiggy24. I'm honored. Thank you. Uh, JVR has elected to become the NHL head coach, apparently, of the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Brent Burns elects to go to Toronto. Well, at least they're getting, at least they're getting opportunities somewhere. You know, if I'm not going to be able to train them up, maybe they'll do some good things elsewhere. So I don't hate that. As we got to hire all these goddamn scouts for playing backyard baseball all night. It was a hell of a game. I don't know if I'll ever get around to playing like the remake and stuff like that, but hell of a game. Hell of a game. You say it three times. The emphasis really makes its point clear. Okay, so we still got two RFAs, but everybody else now we can talk to and set up their off-season plans. So, Spencer Knight, your goal for the off-season is going to be your reflexes. Because, my man, you might end up being our starter if Dustin Wolf leaves, although it's not. Maybe just drop your phone. Um. Yeah, Dustin Wolf might not resign, but I highly doubt he won't. Uh, Dawson LaRose, 99 puck playing frequency as a butterfly goalie. What is going on? Mike Smith reincarnate. <laughs> um, I guess then he should work on his mobility 
If he's going to be playing the puck all the time, he shouldn't be slow. Let's work on your athleticism, pal. What the fuck? Uh, in the system, Andreanoff has a lot to work on. A lot. Let's work on the athleticism. I feel like it weighs less heavily than the reflexes, and he has to work on that as well. Bold Boat Tiger. Same thing. Work on the athleticism. His agility is sub-80 still. That's going to be your goalie goal, right? I mean, if there was anybody that was going to do it, it would be him. So, Let's see. And then Axelson. Carl. Dude, some of these goalies are shit. From an attributes perspective, they're shit. Athleticism for Carl. Jesus. All right. Uh, defensively, Mackenzie Weger. The fact that we added in Charlie Trethway is uh, kind of nuts. And he's not a real life pick of Utah. So, I mean, I, I don't know if I am sending Charlie back, to be honest. That's a hell of an addition for us. Kessler as well. Uh, but first and foremost, Mackenzie Weger. This offseason... Developed gold ice pack. Puck skills could go up a little bit. The shooting category could go up a little bit as well. We could tell him to shoot more. Um, let's see. Well done, by the way, Frank. Well done. Um, honestly, let's tell him to shoot more. He has a good shot. Use it. Use that shot, McKenzie. Rasmus Anderson, five goals, 33 assists last year. Let's work on those puck skills. Get that passing up there even more. Let's do it. Let's do it. He's got silver tape to tape. Skill training for Rasmus Anderson. Uh, Zane Parekh up to an 80 set. Dude, he, mm, he's going to be top two by the start of the season. At, man, we, we are going to have a tough balancing act here amongst these defenders. Um, Listed as an offensive defenseman, but man, he's got 91 defensive awareness. He could easily be a two-way. Um, We're going to tell him to shoot the puck more. Although you could argue adaptability. <laughs> um, What is his adaptability? Not undrafted. Again, there's a glitch in the game right now where... Most recent, like, 2024 draft picks, if you edit them, it erases their freaking draft info. It's causing some complications with the game, too. It's a pain in the ass. Uh, Charlie, as a two-way... That shot's brutal, Charlie. Jesus, you really should be a defensive defenseman. Uh, if he's got high adaptability, we'll work on his skating. But otherwise, I need you to be a DFD. Yeah, let's work on that adaptability. There you go, Charlie. Yoni Yermo. Again, I need your adaptability. I need you to be a DFD, buddy, or you're probably not going to make it because you're just not a good enough two-way. Like, there's no point in you focusing on like an offensive side of your game when your offense isn't good. And then there's Aaron Kessler, this random enforcer that the Red Wings did not sign. Fucking amazing. This is a player I would kill for. In draft a glory goon squad. Absolutely kill for. Um, we got to get him to work on his skating. Dude, he has good defensive awareness already, too. Like, literally, he just needs to work on his skating. He's got a good slap shot. Look at him. This Dude, this guy would be the captain in goon squad. He would be the captain. I am tempted to, right now, turn this into goon squad. Like, make two separate save files, come back to this, or at least have this parked so that we can then go do goon squad off of the same account with this guy leading the way. <laughs> I might honestly do that. Because this guy looks insane. Future captain. Uh, Bruce DeWitz we can't talk to you right now because he's an RFA. Uh, Artem Grushnikov. He's not even an enforcer. He's a legit power forward. Imagine moving him to the forward. He might actually score a fair amount of goals. 
Uh, Grishnikov is a DFD, which is absolutely correct for him. Uh, he still needs to work on his skating first and foremost. He still needs to work on that skating a bit more. He's Bob Probert. Maybe, maybe in the future I'll have him work and see if he's willing to uh, switch to forward. I'll ask him in the preseason. Uh, Jan Kuznetsov. Defensive defenseman. Yeah, he at least had decent passing. Um, does have a heavy shot. He's got to work on his skating here, too. It's the best move for him. As we know, that's typically the case with most AHLers. Henry Muse. He's pushing for an NHL spot soon. OFD. Arguable. His balance and endurance aren't very good. I'm going to check adaptability. I might need him to be a two-way because he's really not that bad defensively. Like, he's not so good offensively that he's a clear-cut OFD. Um, shot blocking and stick checking, if not for adaptability. Let's have him work on that adaptability. Oh, it just gives him the you know better chance of making the team. Jeremy Poirier, who cannot decide if he wants to be a depth defenseman or not. So, Dewinkle, what's going on? Lurking. Oh, uh, wait. That scared me. Lurking. That is my name. And wow, I was just like, what the fuck? Dewinkle, good to see you, by the way. Oh, I hope you have been well. One of our fine, fine lurkers most of the time. Uh, so, Poirier. I need to dap. Actually, I mean, OFD makes sense. Try to improve the shot. If we can try to approve Poirier's shot. Offensive. Let's work on that shooting category, buddy. I'm ready for this upcoming preseason, too, because I think we figured out the best way to develop certain people. Alex Wong. If it's not Wong, I apologize. OFD. No. Adaptability, buddy. That's that's the biggest thing. You're a, you're a two-way. I can't even talk to him yet, actually. He's in junior. Uh, Henry Brustowitz would be the same thing. Uh, right wing side, Mitch Marner. What are you going to work on this year after scoring 28 They're goals for fuck's sake? Do ankle on the primer as well. You're too kind. Dude, Marner has turned into a beast in this timeline. Um, Not that Marner isn't really, really good otherwise, but like, seriously, he's, he's a beast. And the problem is, or maybe it's a good problem to have. He's got five more years with us. Do I tell him to shoot the puck more? Like, is Mitch Marner the sniper I've been waiting for? I don't know what to do with Mitch Marner here. Because we don't have that top-notch sniper. Like, dude, he'd have 100 assists if he was still playing with Austin Matthews. I don't know if I tell him to pass the puck more because I like that he's capable of scoring goals. Mitchie, what do we do with you? Again, I, I like him being a top-notch playmaker. Like, his first year here, hell of a lot more assists. I don't want to tell him not to shoot the puck because he was good, but he's such a good playmaker, too. Um... Mitch, work on the shot a bit more, I guess. I won't tell you to shoot more, but just improve the shot that's already there. <laughs> just because I don't know what the hell we're going to do with you as you've entered your 30s. Jonathan Huberto, what the hell am I going to do with you? Is another question. Mr. 24 goals last year. You're kind of in the same position as Mitch Marner. Let's have you work on your shooting as well. And, uh... Fuck, I... <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Because we're stuck with the two of you with those fucking no movement clauses. At least we got two more years of Huberto before that goes. Sharon Govich, I still don't know if I'm keeping you because you're such a pain in the balls. Like You're not a top sniper. I tried to change you to a two-way. You don't fucking listen. Um... And probably just have him shoot the puck more if he won't listen to adaptability. 
adaptability, buddy. Please become a two-way. Like it'd be so much better for you. It really would. Matt Coronado. Uh, he isn't a happy boy right now. Uh, which is funny because I'm not happy with him either. I'm actually immensely disappointed. He allegedly has max adaptability, so buddy, shoot the puck more. You're supposed to be a sniper, shoot the puck more. Uh, in the system, because guess what? Logan Stewart's about to take your job. Um, we're going to tell Logan to shoot the puck more. Yeah, it's the only thing that we can't change during the course of the regular season. We are all in on Logan Stewart, hopefully being the top-notch sniper that we need him to be. Uh, Nestrossel, who we just randomly signed because Detroit didn't sign him either. Baklov Nestrossel. Top-notch power forward, probably not. He looks very similar to Stromgren. Um, obviously needs to work on his skating. But he does not have the offensive output to where he's going to be this elite level power forward. Uh, he needs to switch to a grinder. If his adaptability is high, work on your skating. Yeah, let's work on adaptability. You have a better chance of making the team as a fourth line grinder. But out of commission when it comes to the NHL the last couple of years, I don't know if the offseason training stuff is new. It is. So adaptability makes them more likely to be willing to change player types or position. Um, higher the adaptability, typically the more willing they're going to be willing to listen. The more willing they get, you get the point. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's the risk of like, hey, I see Nostrasel, like he's a power forward. Like, dude, you're going to be so much better as a grinder. Let's say, even though you need the skating boost, try to talk him into being more willing to listen and be more coachable, essentially. Matvey Gradin. Playmaker's fine. He has a heavy shot, but yeah, playmaker's good. Um... Let's spec him into being as much of a playmaker as possible. Pass the puck more. That looks good. Goivinen, who we just drafted. Power forward. Maybe. There's an argument for him to be a two-way. Um, just because nothing offensively or with this physicality is that crazy. So in theory, you could make Cole Caulfield an enforcer, but, uh, that would be a big time uphill battle. <laughs> I don't know about Kai Koivinen. Maybe we can leave him as a power forward. And then if he continues to just not be one, like he's 18. So he has time to kind of opt out. So if you are going to be a power forward, what's your adaptability like right now? Let's have you shoot the puck more. Because I would, yeah, I, I do prefer righties on the right, lefties on the left, and then mix it up on the power play for possession purposes. So I would like him to change handedness eventually, or what side of the ice he plays on. Thomas Kolzig, training him up as a sniper. Yeah, that's still probably the best for him. He's got a long way to go. And again, you will be told to shoot the puck more. Lovely invisible. Pass shot slider, that means a whole lot. Dylan. Jeffrey Dylan. Uh, we've been trying to train him up as a sniper. He's he's not looking great, that's for sure. We'll keep trying, but it's it's not going too well for Dylan. Again, low elites not nearly as guaranteed to develop as quickly as they used to be. Unless they already have a decent rating. Uh, Stromgren, he's stepping up into that third line role. Looking good as a grinder. Um, really good as a grinder. 93 aggressiveness, 94 body checking is blocked by the webcam. Um, I'm going to go defensive awareness. Like he's not great at passing. Um, he's got good stick checking though. Let's go defensive awareness for him. You could argue skating as well. We do go skating. Just run around and fucking hit people, man. That's all I need from you. Just run around and fucking hit people. And if you can score goals, sweet. Connor Zary showing up as a third liner. Again, you are not a playmaker, buddy. We need that adaptability. We need that adaptability. You need to be a two-way. 
please. It is for the best for you to be a third line, two way, shutting shit down on the power play. Uh, Pelletier is back. He's already a two way, which is great. Uh, he needs to improve his shot blocking and his stick checking. There's a great chance he's going to finally make the team this year. He has been a really, really good depth forward for us. So work on your two-way skills, Mr. Pelletier. The old Jacob Jacob. Uh, and then this guy, Cullen Potter, who Chicago didn't sign. Uh, yeah, playmaker looks phenomenal. 90 offensive awareness, 89 passing. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Chicago, you done goofed. Your loss is our gain. We will gladly tell you to pass the puck more. And uh, yeah, damn, he looks really good. Ole Appleby, Corbin Appleby. As a power forward, eh. I think, again, he's not necessarily going to be an elite power forward. He's not bad. He's just super well-rounded. I'd also like him to be on the other side of the ice. But, yeah, let's maybe go adaptability for Appleby. I think a run where you can't change archetypes might be a good idea and see how the team plays just purely boosting stats. Not the worst idea. Not the worst idea. Though you will still end up with, like, EA-generated dudes. It's like, hey, I'm a sniper, and he has, like, 90 defensive awareness. Andrew Basha. Haymaker, kind of. Sniper, not a bad shout. Two-way, not a bad shout. Um, maybe we look at adaptability. Maybe we tell him to shoot. Yeah, I think it's got to be adaptability. Which is already maxed out. Let's... Uh, it's a good chance I'm going to try to switch him to sniper, so let's tell him to shoot the puck more. Which is counterintuitive if he stays a playmaker, but it's worth the risk. Old Kiona Siona. Very, very physical grinder. Still needs to improve his skating. His endurance is terrible. He steps out on the ice and he's already exhausted. Sounds like me. Oh, up the skating for you, my good sir. Uh, Suniev. Two-way is perfect for you. No notes. No notes. Uh, just work on your skating a bit more. So we got quite a few players now in the system that are going to be able to fill out those bottom six roles really well. Uh, Bataglia. Sniper? Eh. Eh. Probably. Maybe even argue two way, but yeah, sniper's not the the worst thing in the world. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit adaptability. Oh well, it doesn't hurt. Um, I was gonna say Moki in regards to um, the whole like, hey, do a run where you can't change archetypes. That was called NHL twenty through NHL twenty four. We've seen it already. Uh, Parker Bell. Yeah, grinder's still pretty fitting. Have you work on your skating as well. Spam the button for Paca Bell. Paca. Any rules for this? Nah, still just kind of playing a straight up franchise. Nothing too crazy. Um, only to test out, again, the, the Vassy Tactics roster. James Hagens. Could easily be a two-way man. That defensive awareness is stellar. But as a top-notch playmaker, mm, he can be a playmaker with good defense because he is that damn good <laughs> in terms of the passing and the offensive awareness. Um, so yeah, James, we are going to instruct you to continue to pass the puck as much as possible because you are phenomenal at it. You are phenomenal at it. Nazem Kadri, he is regressing now at his age. Two-way is still fine, as we normally do. Man, he went from having gold quick draw to no quick draw. <laughs> We're going to have him work on his skating. Always falls off for the veterans, so... Try to keep your feet underneath you. Sam Honzik. 
does probably have the chance to be that top notch power forward, but man, he'd be such a good uh such a good two way forward as well. If his adaptability is already up there, then we're gonna do uh face off. Let's do adaptability just in case we decide to change him. Uh Banak. Another guy that a team just wasn't able to sign. Another guy very much in that playmaker mold. Um, he really needs to develop left wing or get his face offs up there, though. So what's his adaptability? Yeah, we'll try to change him over to left wing. Uh, Mr. Jakob. I don't know if it's E's or I's. Ish. The old Wozniak. Power forward. He has the offensive awareness. The shot's not good enough, though. You're looking at a two-way. You're looking at a grinder. Uh, let's work on that adaptability as well for you. Mr. Wozniak, it's already good enough. Cool. Work on your face-offs instead, then. Quick and easy. Rory Karens, I do not know if you have a long-term future on this team. Playmaker is still pretty fair. It's start to argue two-way. Um, playmaker's not bad, though. Could be worse. Uh, continue to pass the puck more, but obviously he has a lot of competition in terms of being a playmaker on this team right now. And then the system, Mr. Hoskin, also shaping up to be a playmaker. You need to pass that puck as much as possible, buddy. The MVP of our Calder Cup winning team. Pass that puck. Uh, let's see, Ryland Burns, who we just drafted, listed as a two-way, which is perfect. Um, work on your face-offs, Ryland. Work on them face-offs. All right, only a few players left, and we can see what's going to happen with Dustin Wolf. We have the Grivas, Gustavs, and Rehards. Um, the playmaking center, probably, for Grivas. So, I mean, we could go, could go face-offs if the adaptability isn't great. Let's work on the adaptability for the Grievous again. We're trying to turn them into the German Sedines. Will it happen? Three hearts. Yeah, we still just need adaptability for both these guys. Yeah. Possible increase to adaptability. Not a guarantee. Mr. Fitzhenry, who we just drafted. Listed as a sniper, which is totally fair. Again, we just needed to change him off of center. So what's his adaptability right now? It's maxed out already. That's perfect. Uh, so we can tell him to shoot the puck more. So Nolan Fitzhenry is hopefully going to be one of those top-notch snipers for us. What about Lucas Pedersen? Two-way is fair. Maybe argue sniper, but again, he's not going to break into the top six as a sniper, so he might as well stay as a two-way. Uh, skating's decent as well. Let's work on those puck skills. He needs some passing because uh, right now he cannot pass the puck. Skills training. And I think last but not least is Luke Misa. Playmaker makes sense. Yeah. His shot's not that bad, but yeah, playmaker. Yeah, we got a lot of playmakers in the mix. A ton of them. Have him pass the puck more. All right, so that is the offseason setup. Question is, though, we got two big RFAs. What's going to happen?